2013 saw the rise of niches in the car market. Now, while it wasn't really necessary, this needed to be done to fill a gap in the market. Mercedes were the first to the race with the CLA. Next to follow that in 2013 was the Audi A3 sedan. So the only other German manufacturer that hadn't gotten onto the train was BMW. So they responded in 2014 with this, the 2 Series. While this two-door coupe did the business right up until the end of 2019, it only went through some minor changes. The front headlights got some contoured eyeliner. while the rear got some brighter looking taillights. But it was the inside that got the best improvement, with better plastics, a bigger touch screen, and nicer looking dials, but still with two doors only, until now. This is the new BMW 2 Series, and just like its older sibling, it too got some contoured eyeliner, bigger screens, and some nicer looking dials. It starts at 556,000 Rand, all the way up to 792,000. That particular price buys you one of the fastest versions, the M235i. However, this two series now has four doors and is called a Grand Coupe, which means that finally, after seven years, the rivals now have some healthy competition. So what is a Grand Coupe? Well, it's taking the Coupe version of this car and giving it two extra doors so that it looks and feels like a sedan, but it isn't. So this being the 235i, you'd expect it to carry the same heritage as the previous car, having that big six cylinder engine that had 240 kilowatts and all the torques in the world for it to slide in and about corners. But in this car, it's a little bit different because it's no longer a six cylinder they've given it a two liter four cylinder turbo engine and instead of having that much power that i mentioned before 240 kilowatts it now has 225 so is it the same no it's completely different what isn't the same is the interior switch gear which has gotten a complete digital makeover While a lot of the interior has changed a lot, so has the exterior. And the biggest factor is the grill. It's all over the internet as a meme, but if you look at it, the grills have gotten bigger, but the lights have gotten smaller. It seems like that seems to be the trend these days with cars. But then there's the whole proportions of the car. The bonnet is shorter and the car's gotten a little bit stubbier. It's gotten wider and just bubble looking. It doesn't look right to me, but the more you stare at it, the more it tries to make sense. But I think the biggest issue I have is the rear taillights. It seems a little bit too longer for its own good. If it was that much shorter, it actually would look a whole lot better. But hey, this is the new design language from BMW, so I guess this is something we're going to have to get used to. Stare at the new 2 Series Grand Coupe and its looks will start to grow on you. However, when compared to its rivals, you can say that this is a step in the right direction. So there are drastic changes inside and out. Beside it being a four-cylinder turbo, this car now has four-wheel drive. Now, it's not permanent four-wheel drive, so at times it'll send most of its power to the rear to help you in a situation when you need it, but you can't slide and have as much fun as you did in the old car. So it's really shifted forward and I don't know, is this really a fun driver's car anymore? So has this car changed drastically? It has. Like I said, the previous car was very, very wild and all over the place, but fun. This feels a lot more safer, a lot more comfortable. And I would go as far to say as the old car was a weekend toy that you would have fun with, 
This feels more like a Monday to Friday everyday comfort cruiser. It's got all the creature comforts that you need inside and out, and it feels a lot more as a complete package instead of a driver's toy. But I don't know if BMW are going for that because isn't an M light car supposed to be the one that you have fun with without being too serious of a pure M car? I don't know. I will say this though, this being the 235i, I expected it to have all the go faster bits and all the other things that I mentioned, which it does have. But as a complete package, it just feels complete and usable, something that I would need every single day. But I should also bear in mind that with it being a 235i, there is a faster version coming. So if I wanted a baby M car that didn't want to kill me all the time, I would technically get this. And if I wanted something a little bit more faster, well then I'd hold out for the faster M version. But should you really? Because this is as good as it gets. The M235i name carried so much weight and heritage that when there was to be a successor, we all knew BMW would hit it out the park. But with this, it kind of felt anticlimactic. That being said, this isn't exactly a bad car. And knowing that there will be a faster version and a two-door coupe coming, there is some time for redemption. <laughs>